I'm Chelsea of Friday Pattern Company and today we are doing the sagebrush top sew so along. The sagebrush top is a pull over woven blouse that uh, has a front ruffle across the front and big dramatic puffy sleeves that are brought in with elastic. We have a blog post so long for this with like step-by-step -step pictures that I made before I started making videos. So that is out there if that's the type of learner that you are. But if you want to see a video guide of step-by-step, -step, we're going to do that today. The fabric that I'm using is this beautiful chambray. It's really dark navy. It almost looks black. And I thought that this would be a fun fabric because I'm trying to incorporate more neutral fabrics into my wardrobe and I don't have a lot of dark tops and I think that the sagebrush top does have kind of a little bit of elements of a western style so this kind of almost denim looking fabric pays homage to that and it's kind of a fun nod so like I'm this like modern cowgirl sort of <laughs> You don't need a lot to sew the sagebrush top, you just need to figure out the yardage that you need and get your fabric. You're going to want to wash and dry your fabric or launder it in the way that it is going to be laundered. So if it's a dry clean only, then obviously you'll do that. Um, just to make sure that if your fabric is going to shrink or change in any way, you do that before you cut out your size. So have your pieces cut out for this because we're just going to go over the sewing of the sagebrush. Our first sewing step will be to stay stitch the necklines on pieces A and E. So you'll just use a long straight stitch to sew a quarter inch from the edge on these rounded edges of the neckline. And here's that finished. This just keeps it from our neckline from warping as we sew. So it's going to keep that sh nice round shape and it won't stretch out. Next up, you're going to grab your ruffle piece C and fold it in half wrong sides together lengthwise and then we'll just give that a press. This is going to get gathered and sewn onto the front of our sagebrush top. Now we add a gathering stitch to the top of this ruffle. So sewing on the raw edge with this ruffle piece folded in half you're going to sew a quarter inch from the edge using a long straight stitch that's like about four millimeters long and then you'll do another stitch parallel to that. And we're going to use those to gather this ruffle in. So here we have that done and next up we are going to grab our front yoke A piece and we're going to gather the ruffle in until it matches the length along the bottom of your yoke piece. So you just do this by pulling on the threads and kind of slowly gathering it in and once you have it to the right length you can use your fingers to distribute the ruffles so that they look even and then right sides together we'll pin this to the yoke. Once you have everything pinned in place and perfectly situated you will take this over to your machine and sew it together a half inch from the edge. So here that is finished and we're ready to attach the lower part of the top. Grab your front body piece B and the same way that we added the gathering stitches to the ruffle we'll do that to this top edge between the two notches. Here that is done and this next step will also be kind of familiar to you. We're going to pull on these gathering stitches to gather the front, the center front of the body in until it matches the length of the yoke and then we are going to sew those together right sides together. So we'll just match that up and make sure that the gathers are distributed evenly. The ruffle will be sandwiched in the middle of these two pieces at this point and then we will sew that together using our 5 8 inch seam allowance. Here that is finished and you'll press it so that the seam gets pressed upward and then the ruffle will be pressed downward on your chest. That seam needs to be finished and because I'm using kind of thick fabric, this is like thicker than a normal chambray, I'm actually going to trim away some of the bulk in here and I'm going to be finishing some of the seams in this top with bias tape because it's a really durable finish and it is something that you know I think looks nice on the inside of a garment. So we have a video all about seam finishes that you can go back and it'll show you a bunch of options. You could use a zigzag stitch or a serge stitch, whatever your heart desires. But this seam will need to be finished. All right, let's start on the back of the garment. So this is our back yoke piece E 
and you're gonna press this straight edge under, this is the center back, under a half inch, give it a press, and then press it under another half inch, and then you will take this to your machine and edge stitch that folded edge in place, and you're gonna repeat that for both of your back yoke E pieces. And here's what that looks like finished. Now we'll assemble the back body of our sagebrush top. So I've got my back body F piece, and you're just gonna pin your yoke pieces right sides together to the back body, and they match up at this notch at center back, so they butt right up against each other, and you'll pin those right sides together, and then you'll sew across this back yoke seam using your 5 8 inch seam allowance. Here we have that finished, and we are going to press the yoke upward, and then the seam goes downward, and we're gonna finish that seam. Here we have that seam finished, and the next thing you're gonna do is top stitch this seam downward, so you'll sew below the yoke seam on the body of the top. Alrighty, we've got our front assembled, we've got our back assembled. Now we're gonna join them together. So right sides together, pin your front to your back at the shoulder seams, and then we'll use our 5 8 inch seam allowance to sew those together. Here we have those seams pressed open and finished. Because I'm using the bias binding, it is a little bit more work, but you know, it's looking nice. Next up, we will sew our side seams together. So right sides together, sew down the side seams of your top using your 5 8 inch seam allowance. Here is what that looks like finished. And then I just need to go ahead and finish these seams. So I'm gonna add the bias tape to both sides now. Okay, so now we're gonna finish the neckline. What we do is we grab our neckline binding piece D and we're gonna fold it in half lengthwise and press it. This is kind of like what we did with our ruffle piece. Then you're gonna open up your neckline binding and you're gonna press the raw edges in so that they meet at that center crease that you just pressed into the binding. And then you'll press down the length of your neckline binding piece. Now we want to pin this binding piece to the neckline of our top, but before we do that we want to make a quick mark by folding it in half lengthwise and finding the center of it. This will match up with the center front of our top. So here is our top, and we are going to pin the binding to the neckline. So this pin is where we found the center of our binding piece, and that's going to match up with the notch that you have at the center front of your neckline. So you'll open up your binding, and you will pin the raw edge matching the raw edge of your neckline and you're gonna work outward from center front because this piece is your neckline binding and also the back ties of, at your neckline all in one piece. So we're gonna sew this all in one go and it'll have long tails that extend out past your neckline, if that makes sense. So after you have this pinned in place, you're gonna sew around your neckline following the crease that is on your binding piece, just going around the neckline. Here I have that sewn, and now we will wrap our binding around that raw edge and pin it in place so that we can stitch in the ditch around the neckline. So that means that we're gonna bring that folded edge so that it just goes below the seam line. You can see I'm catching it with this pin on the back side so that you can sew a seam that will essentially be hidden in the ditch of the seam that you already sewed. So I just carefully am pinning around the edge. And again, I'm working from center front outward in both directions. And because we're doing the neckline binding and the tails that will turn into the ties all in one go, we're also going to match up the folded edges on the binding that extends past the neckline and pin that in place so that when we go, we can edge stitch down a tie around the neckline, stitching in the ditch, and then down the other tie. It's a big sewing step, but it's great to get it all done in one go. And this is just a little extra thing. In the instructions to finish the ends of the ties, you can either uh, tie them in a knot or like flip them up and sew them. I'm gonna show you another method, which is to, before you do this big stitch, you fold the raw edge under about a half inch, and then you're gonna fold it in half again and pin it like that so that it'll 
be sewn in the first go, it'll also finish the ends of the ties. This is another little bonus trick that's not in the instructions, but I wanted to show you here. When I'm sewing over something that is small like this, especially something that's bulky at the end, how this is because I've folded the end of the tie in, it tends to want to get sucked down in my machine and kind of jammed. So I put a little piece of paper under there to start off so that I can line it up. I'm going to edge stitch down this tie, so I'm lining it up to start that edge stitching on top of a piece of paper and then you can back stitch. And then after this is done, you can just rip it away and you have this really tidy finish on your the end of your tie. And yeah, this is just one of my favorite tricks. So after you've sewn down the ties around the neckline, here is what your finished neckline will look like. So tidy and clean. Now we're starting on the sleeves. So you've got a double notch at the back of your sleeve, you've got a notch at the top, and then you have a notch on the other side, a single notch. And we're gonna sew gathering stitches between that single notch and the double notch on the other side. So you've done this before on the ruffle, and you're just gonna add those two long straight stitches that we will pull in to make our puffy sleeves. And here's what that looks like finished. You're gonna repeat that on both sleeves. Then we're gonna sew our underarm seam by folding our sleeves in half right sides together, matching up these underarm seams, and then we will sew down the length of the sleeve using our 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have that seam done, you will finish your seam allowance. I've done that with my bias here, and you'll repeat on both sleeves. Okay, time to sew the sleeve to the body of our top. So I've got my top turned inside out and my sleeve turned right side out, which I can then slip the sleeve in and they'll be right sides together. So I'm matching up this underarm seam and of the top and the sleeve, and I'll pin those in place. The single notch on your sleeve matches up with the front yoke of your body of your top. And you want to make sure when you're pinning this that the ruffle also gets pinned into the seam going downward. You don't want that to be folded in a weird way or like warping in any way. So just make sure that that is going downward in your seam. And then you can pin towards the back. The double notch on the back of your sleeve matches up with the back yoke seam. So that just gets pinned in place. The double notch kind of straddles the seam. And now we have all of this extra sleeve that needs to get gathered in so that it matches the length of the rest of the arm size. So grab your gathering stitches and you can start pulling those in. You'll want to concentrate the gathers of your sleeve towards the shoulder of your sleeve to get like the right type of floof. And you do have a notch at the top of your sleeve that will match with the shoulder seam. So you'll pull in from the back and then you can pull in from the front, get your gathers nice distributed evenly. And then we will take this over to the sewing machine and we'll use our 5 8 inch seam allowance to sew all the way around the sleeve. And you'll repeat it on both sides. After you have your sleeve sewn in on both sides, you're gonna finish that seam. And now we are finishing the bottom of the sleeve of the hem, which has elastic added, so there's a little extra step. First, we're gonna press the raw edge of the sleeve under one quarter of an inch all the way around the sleeve. Then you're gonna turn it up another three quarters of an inch and press in place all the way around the sleeve. Now we're gonna take this to our machine and we're gonna edge stitch just an eighth of an inch from that folded edge we've created. And you're gonna leave a little two inch opening so you won't sew all the way around the hem of the sleeve. You're gonna leave a little opening so that we can run elastic through here to create the hem of our sleeve. In the beginning of your instructions, you'll find suggested elastic lengths for the sleeve hem. So you're gonna cut two lengths, one for each sleeve and you will put a safety pin on the end and we're gonna run this elastic through this channel that we've created on our sleeve hem. So I just use that uh, safety pin to inch the elastic through and then as you start to get pull it farther in and the end of the elastic starts to get close to the channel that you've created, I like to set a little pin there so that the elastic doesn't get pulled all the way through because that is so annoying when that happens. 
You'll just continue inching your elastic all the way around the sleeve hem until it pulls out the other side. And then you wanna make sure that you don't twist your elastic anywhere along the way. And then we will overlap the ends by a half inch and then we'll take that over to the sewing machine and sew that into a little loop. Here is that little loop and now we'll just pull the elastic back into the sleeve and kind of distribute it and then you will take it back to the machine and just finish sewing that little opening shut and then you'll repeat that on both sleeves. Now it's time to hem the top and you have a really generous hem on the sagebrush so it gets turned under two inches and pressed and then turned under another two inches and pressed which creates a really nice heavy hemline that I love. Uh, you can also try this on before you do this pressing and see if you want to adjust the length at all um, or change it in any way. At this point, it would be really easy to do. And then once you have this all pressed, you'll just take it over to the sewing machine and edge stitch around the hem and your top is finished. And here is our girl all sewn up and finished. Uh, if you're sewing along, I hope that you also are very excited at this step. And here's the finished top on. Like I said in the beginning, it has kind of a western feel to it and I'm leaning into it with this outfit, pairing it with a pair of high-waisted jeans and a belt. Uh, I don't know if this counts as a Canadian tuxedo. I mean, it's not technically denim on denim, but it is spiritually denim on denim. Uh, and I'm into that, so yeah. Uh, I think this would look cute tucked into shorts or a skirt or underneath a saltwater slip, perhaps. Anyway, I hope that this sew along was fun for you if you're following along at home. I will see you soon and like and subscribe if you liked this video. Helps people find our channel and fall in love with sewing as well.